In this topic, we're going to have a look at meiosis and genetic variation. So we're going to just recap on the process of meiosis, and then we're going to look at how meiosis and fertilization bring about genetic variation. So just to recap, meiosis is divided into two parts. You've got meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. In meiosis 1, the two homologous chromosomes separate. In meiosis 2, the sister chromatids separate. And remember that it goes from diploid number to diploid, sorry, diploid cell, and eventually you get a haploid cell. You should remember that there are four stages in meiosis. You've got prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, and telophase 1. In meiosis 2, you've also got four stages, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And at the end of meiosis 2, there are four cells called a tetrad, and these are haploid. So how does meiosis and fertilization bring about genetic variation? You've got crossing over at prophase 1, independent assortment of homologous chromosomes at metaphase 1, independent assortment of chromatids at metaphase 2, and then the production of haploid gametes that fuse randomly at fertilization. We're going to look at each of these in detail. So looking at crossing over at prophase 1. Now during prophase 1, there's crossing over between the chromatids of homologous chromosomes. This means that genetic material is swapped between the maternal and paternal chromosomes. In this way, new genetic combinations of alleles are produced. So the first step is crossing over at prophase 1 and you get genetic material being swapped. Then you've got something called independent assortment of homologous chromosomes at metaphase 1. Now when pairs of homologous chromosomes arrange themselves on the equator of the spindle during metaphase 1 of meiosis, they do so randomly. So if we look at arrangement 1, the two pairs of homologous chromosomes arrange themselves on the equator in such a way that the chromosome carrying the gene for the brown eyes and the one carrying the allele for blood group A migrate to the same pole. So here you can see that happening in anaphase 1. Cell 1 therefore carries the alleles for brown eyes and blood group A, while cell 2 carries the alleles for blood group B and blue eyes. If you had a different arrangement, in arrangement 2, the chromosomes are arranged in a different way. The result is that cell 3 carries the alleles for blood group A and blue eyes, and cell 4 carries the alleles for blood group B and brown eyes. So here you can see this is because of the independent assortment at metaphase 1, how they've lined up along the equator. So the four resultant cells are different from one another. With more homologous pairs, the number of possible combinations becomes enormous. So in a human, you've got 23 pairs of chromosomes. So it has the potential for 2 to the power of 23, which means it has the potential for 8288608 combinations. <laughs> then you've got independent assortment of chromatids at metaphase 2, not chromosomes, chromatids. And it further produces a variety in the same way as independent assortment of chromosomes at metaphase 1. And lastly, you have the production of haploid gametes that fuse randomly at fertilization. So the haploid gametes produced by meiosis must fuse to restore diploid state. And each gamete has a different makeup. And their random fusion therefore produces a variety in the offspring. So where the gametes are from different parents, two different genetic makeups are combined. So you have even more variety resulting. So in summary, we looked at crossing over at prophase 1. Meiosis brings about variation by crossing over at prophase 1. Independent assortment of homologous chromosomes at metaphase 1. Independent assortment of chromatids at metaphase 2. And then the production of haploid gametes that fuse randomly at fertilization. So it's a good idea to jot down these four points. And that concludes our lesson, the end.